Welcome to my second in my series of Inside the Scene Drum and Bass interviews. Today with me I've got Saunders, DJ, producer and co-owner of Drum and Bass record label Addictive Behaviour. Welcome to Funky Essex. Is <laughs> So, um, yeah, I like to start from the beginning. We tell a little bit of a story in these interviews. So let's kick off. Tell us a bit about how you got into drum and bass music and how that progressed to starting a label. Uh, yeah, I... Got into DMB really the same way I guess most people would listening to stuff glaring out my brother's room, <laughs> and then uh, I was really interested in it. And despite most of my mates never really being into DMB from a young age, and uh, I was just walking around with me, you know, me Walkman, listening to tape packs and stuff. Yeah. Popping down to uh, Boogie Times in Romford and uh, picking up tapes and that first. And I thought, yeah, I've got to go to one of these things and, and, and actually experience a rave. So I like, got my first rave at a very young age. It was a lot so, easier to get him back in the day, <laughs> wasn't it? As soon as I thought I was old enough to make it, uh, in, it through the door, you know. And um, yeah, just loved it. Loved the energy. It was popping around you know, places like, you know, Bagley's, Stratford Rex and all those sorts of uh, warehouse sort of stuff. And, uh, but the real place I really got inspired was when I first went to uh, the end for like Man Records, yeah. Renegade Hardware Nights. Uh, the culture there was just so different. It was like a real family vibe. Uh, you got to know everyone who was going and you just felt like part of a little clique. So yeah. um, I really liked the energy down there. And um, it was when uh, we used to see uh, IC3, MC IC3. Yeah. Uh, he used to get his mic out, come round out of the DJ box and just get involved with us, mm. which we used to just love, you know, and I, I just loved his energy and mm. it made me think, why don't we just do one of our own parties? I'd love to be doing this myself. I just love entertaining, you know, so I was thinking about doing it for a birthday thing and then I ended up doing a club actually here in Romford, Pacific Edge, yeah. uh, for a birthday thing, which then progressed on to doing a couple of small little underground places in and around London area. And I got IC3 down for my first first gig in London oh nice uh, and yeah he bought, bought the vibes and the energy as he does um, yeah so I was just doing a few parties in and around London Herbal yeah um, and I was just getting to the point of speaking to some bigger venues I was in talks with Scala and um, the, what used to be called The Fridge in Brixton mm -hmm. uh, now Electric okay um, uh, before yeah a friend said to me oh I've got these uh, a couple of pals are uh, looking to set up a sort of events and record label thing, you've got to meet them. Um, so we met at a, a, a night in Brixton Academy. Uh, this was Clayton and Nikki, who we first launched the label with, and they said, Yeah, we've got this idea. At the time, my night, I was calling them Funky Bass. Okay, <laughs> Funky <laughs> Bass. Then, Shame you didn't know Funky Essex then. We could yeah, have yeah. done some kind of collaboration. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, they came along and said, Look, we've got this idea. Um, they'd started like looking at the branding first, you know, and, and they'd mapped out this name, Addictive Behaviour, uh, for obvious reasons, and um, they had a, a wicked logo uh, with a turn, sort of turntable tone arm and the ink splash, which is all designed by uh, Mitchy Boy, who's a sort of cult of uh, an artist who's done a lot of uh, DMB record covers. And so I looked at it and I was like, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So from that point on, I decided to abandon the, the little funky bass gigs that I was doing, and, and we set about setting up a record label. Um, so yeah, that was it. Cool. So you started putting all your focus into the label. Yeah. And, um, so so when did you, when did the label actually start? How long have you been running now? God. So it actually started in I think it was 2013. So it's good six seven years now. Yeah. Yeah. Well running. established. But to be honest, it, it was in planning mode for a good year and a half, two years before that. So we were wow. looking at artwork, yeah. branding. You know, kept on having meetups to decide how we was gonna mm. uh, get some some artists on onto the first release, and how I was gonna how we was gonna release that, whether it's gonna be a vinyl or digital or what. So, mm. Mm. Yeah. So, how many artists have you got signed to your label currently? Well, we don't really have anyone signed exclusively, but we've worked with a huge amount of artists over yeah. the years. So, I think God, it's hard to say. So, I, I, if you look on the Addictive Behaviour website, all the ones listed are they from? From the beginning, or are they the ones that are current? Because there's quite a few on there. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, they're not all listed. All the, all the artists we've ever worked with, you know, because the other people will just do one track, right? And, yeah, and disappear and do something with someone else. But um, yeah, most of the ones that are, we've done regular releases with are on there. Um, but really, going forward, we're going to be trying to focus a little bit more on a select number of artists that you know we're, we're really sort of getting behind. And right. With. Okay. Cool. So the label's been running about six years now. How many hours do you have to spend running a 
label or an average? Good question, actually. Um, a lot. It's there's only two of us now running the label, uh, right. me and Clayton. A lot of time is spent on a label, uh, setting it up and, and setting up releases. I think a lot of people don't realise just how much time does go on. It's not just curating the music, it's obviously looking at the artworks, and briefing artworks, uh, any animations, setting up the metadata for all the releases, all the sort of back end admin yeah. that people don't realise goes on. Um, when there's only two of you doing it, you can imagine you spend nearly every hour of the day that you're not doing something else like looking after your kid or going and do your normal day job. So yeah, yeah it, it can be hard graft, but we love it. You know, we're in it for the passion. So more than happy to work into the night sometimes if I have to. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting stuff lined up. But I would say to anyone looking at South Label, make sure you've got plenty of time. Make sure you've got, if you can, get as many hands involved as possible. Mm. Yeah. And make sure you really, really love it and want to yeah, do it because exactly. it's going to take over your life. So obviously, your label is drum and bass. How would you describe your sound? Have you got like a specific subgenre? Yeah, I mean, when we started out, we actually had a vision with doing sort of harder edged sort of stuff, even possibly you could say it was neuro. So it's quite heavy sound we started with, but as we progressed, our tastes have changed and we sort of started to release a lot more uh, sort of techier, minimal stuff. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, articles and features describing it as sort of tech funk. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, we're into a lot of stuff really between us. Um, so really, as long as it's consistently well-produced music, that's what the mm. key thing for us. Mm. We like stuff that's layered, interesting, uh, lots of thought gone into it. Um, so I think we're going to maybe go a bit full circle and come back to start doing a bit more heavier stuff into 2021. Yeah. Cool, look forward to that. So a bit of a light-hearted question next. Um, if you could have signed any track over the last five years to your label, what would it be? So basically, yeah, what what, what tracks have you absolutely loved and thought, oh, that, I would have loved to have got that one? That is a tough one. Um, <laughs> well, like, I'm into some real deep stuff sometimes, like uh, real beard strokey stuff. I love, um, I mean, there's an album that, that everyone would know, the uh, Something Blue, I think it's called, for Blocks and Escher. Literally everything on there is so deep and moody, uh, so anything from there. But then also, I love a bit of something techy and uh, heavier and uh, with a lot of groove. I'd say for an individual track, maybe Drench by Circuits. Yeah, okay. Um, so um, who has been your biggest success story on your label so far? And you don't have to just say one person if you don't, but yeah, let's, let's go yeah, through some. It's hard to judge what success is really, but I guess... Um, there's been everyone we've sort of worked with from the early days as we're relatively lesser known when we when we first started doing tunes with them and, and definitely everyone we've worked with in early days were probably lesser known than they are now. Yeah. And I think when we've done releases, there's definitely been some heads have turned and, and they've started to do releases with lots of other labels. Mm. Um, I mean, for example, our first ever release had L33. Uh, East Colours uh, and and uh, Minor Rain and they've all they've all gone on to do stuff with like Program and uh, L33 now is like on Eat Brain doing lots of wow like, heavy yeah. neuro stuff but yeah also maybe like Data Three mm -hmm. we did a lot of releases with them Early Doors obviously there's three of them so they've all got their own little aliases going on with Polar and Bryson one Mark uh, Mark Dinamo is another um, but all of them doing really good now yeah um, definitely so yeah there's been a lot. Uh, you know that we've sourced out from looking over SoundCloud and, mm. and looking, just mm. looking for these people that are about to break, and they've then done a release with us, and, and yeah, been, been turning a lot of heads. Brilliant. So, what's your goals for the label? When we first started, I was looking to do start a label you know build up a following and and then look at bringing it back and start to do any more events so we kind of always wanted to bring the whole package really it's not just about releasing good music but also we like to host some parties and yeah a bit like how ram was back in the day because i know yeah. like you, you've mentioned you used to go down the end um, exactly for me it was all about inspired by that sort of uh, approach yeah exactly it's all about you know entertaining the whole like, package i yeah. just want to see happy faces dancing about in, in, in a club really so and let's be honest that is the fun side of it really I yeah, mean the label's definitely. all good there's a lot of work that goes into it like you said there's a lot of man hours in the background doing a lot of the admin and stuff putting nights on that's the ultimate really isn't it yeah yeah we love putting on the 
nights and like we really go the whole hog or make sure we've got always good sound we'll always hire a good sound system if there isn't one in the in the venue and we'll bring a bit of extra production like lights and lasers to really make it kick off mm. you know so we always make a, an effort to make each party a bit more individual and special you know yeah i remember coming to one of your nights at fabric and it was um really good um what's been your most successful night for the label so far most successful was probably five years uh yeah five years birthday party in um in bristol in a club called dakota uh yeah just had a huge number through the door and it was it was Brilliant. it was wicked really kicked off yeah, really enjoyed the vibes obviously after five years of running as well it's great to see so many people and it's a our first big big night in bristol um so yeah, really enjoyed that. DMB's big in Bristol, isn't it? Um, moving on slightly to a slightly different topic, live streams. Obviously, this year we've all been in lockdown. Live streams have just gone through the roof. It seems to be all about the live streams. What's your views on live streams? Have you done any? Do you watch yeah, any? Yeah, funny one, actually. Uh, literally, a couple of weeks ago, I did a, a show on Life FM again. We used to do quite regular shows. Um, funnily, during lockdown, I, I haven't <laughs> been doing them, but... Um, we decided to set one up and just as we set it up they said we're going into lockdown again so uh, it was nice to get that in um, and yeah Life Fem is a wicked platform to do we've been running 25 years uh, so it's, it's a pleasure to get down there and do that and hopefully we'll be doing that again maybe just, just before Christmas okay so watch out for that one that's Saunders on Life FM good stuff um, what have you missed most in this lockdown getting a fresh pint getting so, a fresh pint yeah uh, I mean I got one in just before lockdown so it hasn't really been that long but uh, yeah who doesn't miss a fresh pint yeah um, it's just going up to the bar <laughs> But yeah, I, I think everyone's just missing that missing that club environment, you know. Mm. It's been a tough one this year, especially for like artists that are sort of was ready to sort of really break through at the beginning of the year and then boom, everything's got closed down. But has anyone caught your eye this year? Any new artists that, that you sort of got your eye on or you seen sort of think's going to be the next big thing? Um, hard to say. Probably wouldn't, <laughs> want, wouldn't, wouldn't want to say who we're tapping up next. But I mean, just the stuff that I listen to regularly, I mean... Um, not new artists exactly, but um, mixing wise, I, I've been listening to a lot of the, the filth, filth mixes. Yeah. There's these filth in sessions. Okay, cool. So you're actually you actually produce as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been dabbling in production for years, 15, 10, 15 years. Yeah. But, um, I've I've never actually got to a standard that I'm happy with yet to to put out. Yeah. You come across as a bit of a perfectionist. Like you don't <laughs> do things in half. What's what's to come with you for you as a producer? Well. Um, because you're going to say it out loud now, so you're going to have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, I mean, well, uh, about a year and a half ago, um, I was I was trying to get back into it, and I realised, you know, I've got the creative inspirations and, and stuff, but uh, where I'm running a record label, anything I do put out, I want it to be of the calibre that as good as or better than, you yeah. know, the stuff that we're putting out. And I realised I need a little bit more of that sort of technical inspiration. And um, I decided actually to go and speak to a friend, Gary, and he actually was involved with us in the beginning of Addictive Behaviour. There's actually really five of us when we first started launching it, but um, we went our separate ways. Gary went off and did his own label, uh, My Own Audio. Yeah. Um, so, but what I was aware of is that he'd done this SAE Institute course in production and I knew he had a little bit more technical knowledge that I was lacking. Right, okay. And so he was with me for a drinks and I started to approach him and say, look, I think you could help me out. I think I could help you out. Yeah. We could both work with each other well. How would you like to, you know, start a journey of collaborating? And yeah, we've been working really well together. He's really thought some great ideas to make it a lot easier for us. We've both got kids. Um, and so I think the hardest thing about production as well as running a label mm. is finding that time. Yeah. And Gary's come at it of an angle of, look, here's how we could save time. Here's how we could use template in and, and certain techniques to really help us, you know, progress a lot quicker in finishing and completing tracks so it's looking more like a uh, uh, realistic that we're going to uh, release something soon so sounds like a good collaboration and you're both bringing different expertise to the table so have you got a name for that duo or are you still working on that uh, yeah yeah that's in the pipeline <laughs> okay so, yeah. <laughs> you want to spill the beans no nothing that? yet nothing yet but um, yeah you, I'm sure you'll hear about it when we do uh, when we do our first okay, release okay well yeah. you can you can let us know first on Frankie Essex and send, <laughs> send me some dubs and I'll play them on my show yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> so future plans just to wrap up the interview um, future plans as an artist as a record label owner we've, we've kind of touched on this is there anything else this is your chance now to do any plugs you want to do <laughs> um, 
<laughs> well, yeah, it's been a funny one because of the lockdown and, and things going on. It's it's been a funny old year. So we've actually taken a small break in uh, releases just whilst we're sort of restructuring the label a little bit and getting ready to come back with some maybe a bit heavier music. We've been doing quite a lot of minimal stuff over the years, so we're mm-hmm. thinking about um, bringing back some heavier vibes and just focusing on people that are, you know, uh, really part of the addictive sort mm. of family, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, going forward, there's going to be some stronger releases coming, uh, heavier releases um, from some real addictive yeah. sort of names. Yeah, for myself, just get that first release out yeah. there. I think we're going to down, I think, and get some, some productions finished. Brilliant. So hopefully we... Uh, something out from us in 2021. We'll look forward to that and I think it's really important to look at what you're doing and, and where you want to go so I think it's really good what you're doing and I, I can't wait to hear what's to come from Addicted Behaviour next year. Nice so um, yeah I'm going to wrap things up there. Thank you very much for coming on Funky Essex and uh, spilling the beans with us today. Thank you. Um, you've been listening to Saunders from Addicted Behaviour. Funky Essex.